Welcome again back to our webinars. Today, we're going to be talking about an introduction to TechSoup's website services, and we're going to share some success stories with you. My name is Aretha Simons. I'm the webinar producer. Thank you for letting us know where you're zooming in from in the chat and how you made it through the storm. We appreciate you for being here. Um, we got some people from Florida, St. Pete, that I'm sure got a lot of weather. So thank you for being here. I'm going to show you how you can engage on the next slide. Um, you are on mute, so we would love if you would type your questions in the Q&A, but feel free to use the chat. We have team members from TAP Network here that will be able to grab your questions. We're going to mail the slides and the video replay by tomorrow. Um, if you need the closed caption, go ahead and type on the bottom of your screen where you see the CC button. I have a quick announcement before I turn this over to Cal and John um, on the next slide. I don't know if you know, but September 15th through October 15th, is the Hispanic Heritage Month. So in honor of that, TechSoup is doing a live event. So if you're watching this on the replay or you are here in the Zoom room with us and you're near the San Francisco Bay Area, come and join us. We're gonna have food, um, live music, and just a conversation about technology. Gonna put the link in the chat so you can register. It is free. So mark your calendars for September 15th, um, 2024, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And we hope to see you there. I'm gonna turn this over to Kyle Barkin. He's the co-founder of TAP Network. And John is here. Um, you're, gonna, you're in good hands. So guys, have a great webinar. Thanks, Aretha. And good uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone, wherever you're, you're kind of dialing in from today. Um, as Aretha mentioned, we're gonna go through the services that are offered um, through TechSoup for nonprofits from website stand, website services, so design, development, uh, maintenance, things like that, as well as uh, a new product that we're offering and launching, uh, building membership portals for nonprofit organizations. We've got uh, 12, 15 years of experience building portals for organizations of all sizes, but this is our you know our kind of first foray into, into developing something a little bit smaller, but more manageable for nonprofits. So we're excited to launch that and go through that today. Uh, we'll start with an introduction to who TAP is, talk about custom website development, what that is, talk about how we build our sites and how our sites are built. Uh, give you some example background on some success stories. So sort of cover the different ways that websites are used outside of just being a more brochure style site. Uh, and then we'll cover some of the, this, we'll wrap it up with actually the services. So website maintenance and support, hosting and security, and then those offers that we, I've talked about in the very beginning. Uh, so just quick who we are. Uh, my name is Kyle Barkins. I'm the co-founder of TAP Network. Um, I've got about 20, 20 something years experience. I just had my 40th birthday on Friday. So however much experience I've had since I taught myself to uh, to code websites when I was about 13 or 14 years old. I don't really claim the time I was in high school as experience. So I like to say I've got 20 to 25 years experience um, in marketing application development. I've launched, as this says, uh, more than 250 websites, but probably many more than that at this point. Tons of different website platforms. Um, mostly geared at, in the last 12 to 15 years in the nonprofit mission-driven space. Uh, I'm joined today by John Hill on our team. He is our web project manager. So uh, any any projects that we do uh, web web oriented, uh, John will have his his hands in in some way, making sure the team is is allocated uh, correctly, making sure we have all the right resources and making sure that those um, that those websites, those projects are getting done to completion. So just some background on TAP. Uh, we are a mission, as I mentioned, a mission-driven organization, uh, empowering organizations for good. We are the HubSpot and solutions provider for web and marketing services for TechSoup. So if you got an email about this webinar today, the promotional emails, if you you know browse around their website, you read their blog, um, a lot of that is either, either we developed it or that's gone through our hands at some point and through the marketing automation platforms we put in place. And through that partnership with TechSoup, uh, we are also the exclusive provider of website services, uh, marketing services, AI, uh, and then as we mentioned, like uh, membership portals for, for TechSoup. Uh, we also work with a number of other organizations and partnerships that allow us, that bring us into the nonprofit and uh, mission-driven space. Uh, we started TAP because we saw a real unmet need for organizations like nonprofits at the time to put web web pl platforms, put websites, put social media marketing in place. And it's, it was kind of like the wild, wild west at the time, so to speak, where you know nonprofits weren't able to compete on this larger scale, where there's tons of tools, tons of capabilities, and a lot of education out there uh, that we were, were excited to start to provide so we could work in that space and, and do work with the, the organizations that do good and, and make an impact in our communities. 
Uh, we have worked to that point. We've worked with organizations of all shapes and sizes from multinational, multi-billion and trillion dollar organizations like Denso, who is one of the partners uh, and sub subsidiaries of uh, Toyota to organizations like Nonstop Health, who provides nonstop or provides health insurance and health uh, benefits for previously nonprofit and community health center organizations. And they've recently branched out into the uh, the larger space as well. Uh, we work a lot in the green and clean energy space, working with things like work with organizations like community solar organizations, working with low to moderate income um, families that are that were able now to provide community solar electrical um, service to. We also work with a, a number of small to mid-sized nonprofit organizations, everything from fundraising to uh, to driving awareness, driving members, and driving volunteers. How we can help, how we're here to help. We, we as I mentioned, we kind of, this runs the gamut. Our services run the gamut uh, in the digital and um, marketing spaces. So everything from strategy to under, understanding, you know, what your organization is, what it's trying to do, what the, pro the problem you're trying to solve is, what the community you're in is, and coming up with a strategy, whether that's applying technology, that strategy, applying, you know, creative and branding, and then developing all the services that would go along with that all the way down the funnel from creative branding, web, website development that we're here to talk about today, uh, social media marketing, paid media, public relations, and really anything in between. With that, I will kick it over to John to go through our why these are why websites are so important for nonprofit organizations. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. So let's just kind of jump right in and talk about why websites are so critical for nonprofits. You know, this is where you can enhance engagement with your supporters and your community, drive donations, attract volunteers. It's also a central hub for education and information for your cause, right? Um, a website is also a location that's accessible 24-7 anywhere in the world. So this lets you reach a far wider audience than traditional methods. Um, couple that with website analytics, you can really gain some valuable data and insights into who your supporters are and what interests them. This will allow you to tailor your outreach and your messaging for a much better impact. And then, um, of course, accessibility. This ensures everyone can learn about your mission and get involved regardless of location or ability. And that's really only the tip of the iceberg. Uh, websites are a chance to amplify your voice and make a bigger difference overall. Um, up next, we're going to dive into website development and what makes a good website. So first, let's talk about what makes a great nonprofit website. You want a website that can grow with you, of course, right? Um, that's where scalability and flexibility come in. Your website should be able to handle increased traffic and adapt to your changing needs, both on the front and the back end. Um, you want to think of it as a living document, not just like a static brochure. And of course, the best uh, nonprofit websites prioritize user experience. So this means um, making it easy for visitors to navigate, find the information they need and take action. So imagine someone coming to your website for the first time, can they easily understand your mission um, or where to donate or uh, volunteer opportunities within just a few clicks? Uh, you know, this is the user experience or UX that we're gonna be striving for. And then finally, um, a, not, a great nonprofit website leverages the integration opportunities. This means connecting your website with the tools you use like donor management software or email marketing platforms. Um, you know, this streamlines your workflow and creates a more cohesive experience for you and the people that come to your site. Um, so by focusing on these three things, the scalability, the UX, the integration, you can build a website that's really powerful and is going to be a huge asset for your nonprofit. Um, and now I'll hand it back over to Kyle, who's going to talk a little bit further about site design and planning. Thanks, John. Um, so we try to we try to take a you'll hear us if you talk with us enough or read some of our content that we take a growth driven approach to everything we do. Um, and that's because we think it's you know, we, we, we've seen in the past the traditional website design, traditional marketing uh, approach we think is is, is sort of broken. Uh, we know it's difficult to, to plan because nonprofits grow and pivot all the time that, you know, that your needs change, your your organization changes, the volunteers. So trying to plan, implement something today that you're going to launch you know, six months from now and expect it not to change and still be able to serve your organization two years from now is kind of, it's kind of crazy. And we noticed that when we 
we started, uh, you know, working with nonprofit organizations. It's the same in for-profit businesses as well, but it's a little bit more, I think, pronounced for nonprofits. Um, so we want to make sure we're able to meet the evolving needs of an organization. It also often comes with a high cost. If you do things that way, you're sort of biting off, a lot of times biting off more than you can chew, trying to work through these large projects, you know, while, you know, while you're spread thin uh, at your organization, while you have a capacity issue and you're not able to really give the attention needed. And then um, there's, once it's live, once it's launched, if you put everything in place and now it's impossible to kind of go back, it really limits your updates that you're able to put put there after launch. So, hey, you might want to make these changes, but you've already spent, you know, 30, 40, $50,000. You've already spent six, six, eight, 12 months of time um, to get getting to this point. And now you, you know, have to wait till the next time, this next time the budget allows for it uh, to do this whole process over again, just to make some small or incremental changes. So to address that, uh, we take this growth driven approach where we're constantly evolving, constantly improving. And we, we put a, a strong platform in place from the very beginning. We built what we call a launch pad site. And we'll go through some of the, the phases of this as well, where we put a launch pad site in place up front and that's becomes the, the platform for us to build on to over time. So I use a ton of housing analogies. Um, the best the best version of this I, I can kind of explain is like, we want to give you a big plot of land, but we don't want to put the biggest house on it at first. We build a really strong foundation that you could add, you know, an extension on later, or add a second story on as your family grows. We want to take that same approach for, you know, website development. We don't, we don't want to move you into, you know, the, the high end condo on the water, but it's only got one bedroom and you've got a growing family and now you've got to move and you spend all your money. We take that same approach for, um, for website development. And we do that by starting off um, in the strategy phase where we we take a look at your analytics, we see everything that you know your nonprofit's done in the past, and we understand what what your goals are for the future, and we come up with a strategy for for these different phases. Uh, once we're once we're done that, once we know what those metrics are, uh, we we put that launch pad website in place. So you might today you might have I don't know a ten year old website with thirty or forty or fifty pages on it, and once we go through the analytics, we might see you're only really getting traffic to five or six of those pages. And the bulk of your traffic goes to these two main pages, but you don't think there's enough content there or you have, you know, something's changed over time. And we work with you and say, okay, let's launch this website with, you know, seven key pages and build on this over time. And we'll see how this traffic runs and we'll, uh, you know, we'll, we'll measure and we'll optimize and we'll continue to, to add on to this. So that's, that's the, the launch pad website we put in place. Once that's in place, then we're constantly monitoring, monitoring that, um, that site to see what's working, what's not. We're able to make incremental changes. We're able to make sure that we can improve conversions. We can add new forms. We can add new pages uh, that stay on brand, that, that keep within that style. And by doing that, we can plan over time. So if a new program comes, you know, you launch a new program or you launch in a new community, we've got the base foundation there that we can start to develop that on top of. We can learn how that, how that launches in that community. And that becomes this cycle of continuous improvement where we're transferring that knowledge uh, throughout over and over again and be able, and able to grow that site. So now your website's not obsolete in 18 months. It becomes something that can stay and, and grow um, for the three, five, six, seven year time frame. We we still, we launched websites in 2012, 2013, 2014 uh, when, we, when we got first started uh, kind of taking this approach. And those websites are to this day still the same that we launched back then. With a bunch of improvements, the same foundation with a bunch of improvements. But they're not they're not sacrificing um, performance. They're not sacrificing you know responsiveness. They're not sacrificing accessibility because we were able to put a solid foundation in place there. And we don't have to go back to those those organizations. They don't have to come back to us and say, "Oh my God, it's time for a redesign." You know, my my website's outdated. And I'll kick over the the more details of the strategy phase for John to cover. Yeah. So I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into some of these things that <clears throat> Kyle just, just talked about. And first up is the strategy phase. So this is where we are going to lay all that groundwork that he was kind of talking about. Uh, you know, the first step is going to be target audience analysis. So who are you trying to reach? Existing donors, potential volunteers, people who are just passionate about your cause, that sort of thing. Um, it'll help you focus on your site's needs. And then next, we're, uh, we need to define clear website goals, right? What do you want your visitors to do when they land on your site? Do you want them to donate, sign up for a newsletter, learn more about your programs, zeroing in on those needs? Um, so once you know your audience and goals, then it's time for the content audit. So this means taking stock of all the existing content you have, what can be repurposed for the site, 
what needs to be created fresh. This helps ensure your website has content that's high quality and relevant, uh, that's gonna get your visitors engaged. Uh, also during this time, we want to start thinking about, you know, SEO best practices, those keywords in your content that are gonna get you discovered when people are searching. Um, and it's here where we're gonna start thinking about accessibility needs as well, making sure your site and the content on it are accessible to people with disabilities, um, trying to keep the barriers to entry low on your site. Um, and then the last step in this phase is going to be the uh, site structure. So imagine this as the website's skeleton. You know, we'll map out the main pages, the sub pages, how they'll all connect. Um, so phase one is all about kind of laying that solid foundation for a website and moving all of that forward over into the new phase. which is on the Launchpad website. So uh, phase two is all about this Launchpad website. Um, a key element here is the content management system or CMS. Um, think of this as the engine that powers your website. We mainly utilize WordPress, which you may or may not have heard of before. Um, this is a really powerful CMS that allows us to customize it for your needs during development. Um, WordPress allows you to easily add and edit, duplicate your website content without needing extensive coding knowledge. Um, but a great website isn't just about you know, that functionality. It's also about creating a positive user experience or UX. Um, and we work with design professionals who understand the unique needs of nonprofits. You know, they're gonna create a website that's visually appealing, uh, easy to navigate, and also optimized for multiple device sizes. Uh, we also understand the importance of that integration. Uh, it's here we can help set up the initial integration uh, with the tools that you already are using, like the donor management software, email marketing, maps, memberships, things like that. Um, this is gonna streamline that workflow and ensure that all of your data is talking to each other. Um, with all these pieces designed and dev out, we're then of course going to test your site across uh, multiple platforms and devices to make sure that no matter where users are coming from, uh, they can easily reach you. And then we move on to the final phase, which is phase three, which is that continuous improvement Kyle was talking about earlier. So phase two got your website up and running, but the work, you know, of course is still not done. Um, phase three is all about keeping that going. You know, we want to, we want your website to be a living, breathing entity that grows and adapts right alongside your nonprofit. So at this point, we'll evaluate performance uh, the performance based on your initial goals that we set in phase one. You know, did your website drive the numbers of donations you were hoping for? Uh, did it attract new volunteers? Um, with those analytics, we can see what's working and what needs tweaking. And then another element is collecting the UX feedback from your target audience. Um, you know, and learning more about your users. What do users find helpful? What do they find confusing? Um, yeah, so phase three is all about kind of that analyzing and planning for the future with big and small updates to meet, make sure we meet your goals and improve the UX further and make your website even better. And then up next, we're going to go over a couple of success stories, um, and I will hand it over to Kyle to get us started. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. So um, you, what you're going to see in the next few slides is just some examples of different websites. Uh, we'll have a little bit before and after and talk through what we changed, what we did, what we changed, um, and the types of organizations. So the first is an organization called the Down Syndrome Association of Central Texas. Um, they're, a, I would say, a mid-sized organization, but when they came to us, they, as you can see, that the, the website they came to us came to us with is the one on the on the left, which was kind of just they didn't have a lot of control over. Um, it wasn't mobile responsive or mobile friendly, and it was just a lot of text. It was it was hard to follow. It was hard to learn about their programs, learn about their, um, you know, the, the support uh, that they offered. And what we did was we updated the design. So we we took a, a very straightforward approach to updating the design, kept it on brand, uh, made sure we we were able to to showcase, you know, diversity uh, and equity and inclusion in in all the the images and in the, the audiences that were that they were targeting that they were that and the programs that they have available. And we were able to highlight and bring a lot of that stuff right to the to the homepage. So we were able to keep people from going as many steps in to try to find out, you know, what they do um, or, or learn more information about how they might might be able to volunteer support or how to get support from that organization. Um, so we improved that user experience by 
organizing those resources by, by in different taxonomies through audience through category through type to make it easy and give multiple ways to multiple paths to get to that information uh, we brought that those key events and activity right to the home page and created a quick and easy search so you could search by things like event uh, type the age range that those events were for uh, and the dates those events occurred on uh, and then we also clearly displayed those benefits of membership and were able to help drive um, more membership through that user-friendly application and form that we put in place i don't have the exact metrics i do know um, when we when we first looked after launch and then we follow up six months after launch we'd seen like a three or four x uh, increase in uh, enrollment or membership completions at least Sure. Now we'll uh, jump into another example, this time focusing on uh, One Pulse Academy. Uh, some background on One Pulse. Uh, One Pulse is an organization that honors the victims of the Pulse nightclub tragedy to inspire community and action. Uh, their educational arm, which is this One Pulse Academy, um, offers a variety of programs and resources to promote safety, inclusion, and understanding. Um, if we jump over to the next slide, um, one Pulse reached out to us um, needing a website that would be flexible and adaptable. They wanted a platform to easily showcase their um, existing educational programs and add new ones as they developed them. So our goal was to create a website that facilitated um, accessible outreach. So some of the things we did um, you know, using WordPress and Elementor and custom post types, we created a templated format. This allowed them to upload their new and previous educational programs uh, simply on the back end, which then would display in a predetermined style for visitors to see on the front end. Um, we wanted to make their programs uh, sortable, searchable, and filterable so people could easily find programs by topic, date, or target audience, et cetera, um, you know, making sure everyone could find what they were looking for. Um, Another thing was that the website must meet the specific grant requirements that were outlined by the um, Academy's funders. Um, and then lastly, the website wasn't just about showcasing the uh, past programs, obviously. Uh, we wanted to encourage future engagement with events and programs so um, visitors could sign up for email alerts, uh, register for upcoming workshops, and become uh, overall more involved with them. Up next, we've got... Um, Green Lake Preschool, which is a preschool and care center with two locations. Uh, one is Green Lake, the other is uh, Woodland Hall. They came to us because they were managing separate websites uh, for each location differently, which was just time consuming and inefficient. Um, and then as you can see here in the before and after, uh, we wanted to update the design for both. Um, on the left is the before. Um, we wanted both schools to have the, a similar look and feel while still differentiating between the two locations. Uh, we wanted to highlight who they are and show off a more welcoming, real version of themselves. Um, and to make all this easier, we wanted to make a multi-site. Um, so on the next slide, we can see uh, what is a multi-site. This is a feature that allowed us to create multiple websites um, under a single parent organization or site. Uh, think of it as an umbrella concept or um, even better, uh, a house. Um, it's a two-bedroom house. This The house itself is the parent site and each location is its own room with its own unique content and settings. Uh, this helps streamline their management process and um, ensure that the consistent look and feel across uh, both schools happened. Um, so with a WordPress multi-site, um, they're able to create that consistent brochure style information um, about the programs and services offered at both locations um, with the ability to move that information around easily. Uh, also integrate the tools they were already using. You know, we synced with um, Loom and Calendly so they could work easier with their members for things like scheduling appointments and accessing those video resources. Um, and then, like I said earlier, they can maintain a consistent brand. Uh, they can easily make brand or design updates for both sites housed in the same area. Um, so these things done in a multi-site setting um, allow them to save a lot of time and resources when it comes to updates and changes to their sites. Um, it allows them to remain, like I said, consistent um, and centralizes everything for them, allowing them to be flexible and scalable moving forward. 
And then want to kind of wrap this up, uh, just to give an example, we've talked about some started kind of brochure websites, and we talked about the ones that are a little bit more functional for, um, or an example that was a little bit more functional for programs uh, and resources, evolve that into um, being able to manage one multiple websites from a single pl platform while keeping the look and feel consistent. So helping with capacity for organizations that are small or limited knowledge on making these updates. And I wanted to kind of wrap this together um, by talking about a, an organization that sort of touches on all of those pieces, as well as adds a membership portal aspect to this as well. So a lot of times people think nonprofits, the, the key reason for them having a website is to drive donations, but we know that there's so much more than that out there. A lot of it is is building community. A lot of it is, um, you know, supporting in many cases, members, or, you know, if you have like, if you have an association, supporting volunteers, supporting um the people that are part of your cause or, uh, you know, who might be affected by what, whatever your, your cause is geared towards uh, building cohorts and things like that. So to that effect, we've built a number of and we customize a number of membership portals to put to, to really build a, uh, you know, an online version of possibly your offline services. Uh, and this became, I think, more prominent uh, or more um, was highlighted a little bit more during COVID and coming out of COVID when a lot of organizations had, you know, community centers, like we were working with boys and girls clubs and things like that, where those community centers had to close down. They had no way to serve their community, no way to serve the, um, you know, the, the kids that they served or the families they served. And they were looking for ways to pivot. And we started putting these these membership portals and, and tools in place for them where they were able to now, you know, continue that conversation offline, where they're able to give, you know, parents the support that they need um, to provide, whether that would could be like services or could be um, activities or, or uh, just advice. Uh, and they would also give us the opportunity to put groups out there where you could speak to other parents, you could speak to other people in the community uh, and use that for different applications. So this organization, the National Trafficking Sheltered Alliance, they came to us before, you know, a full website redesign um, where they were able, where they wanted to put the public uh, resources out there, give information that, that about what their organization does, open up the, the the events to the public, but then still be able to also serve their members, drive membership enrollment, um, increase their, their funding through membership sales. So they sell memberships to their site, different levels of memberships, uh, and then, you know, still be able to have a, a, a place to list all the different great things that this organization does across the country. So what we did for them was we built that member member portal. So we have, you know, registration there, they can take payments. Um, and then we give those members access to member only content. So you might see some public facing content that might drip you into, hey, join now to, to learn more about this. Uh, and then again, there's different membership tiers. Uh, we have a public facing membership directory. So you can see who is who the mem members of this organization are, which really helps drive um, the reason and the benefit for joining as a member. Uh, and we were able to put in that tiered event registration as well so in order not not just membership pricing but also event pricing so people can you know pay to come to different events and then if you have a member if you're a member you pay a different fee than the, the public would again kind of enticing you to to come to these events as you can see um, like some of the benefits of membership just in this screenshot are evolving partnerships um, they have, we have a knowledge center in there again that's part, partially public partially membership driven there's courses that you can join as well. This is all tied into and integrated with um, for them for Zoom Zoom webinars. So you join the, the event, it enrolls you for the webinar. You get all the automation and emails um, sent to you about that, that webinar. Uh, then you can actually track those courses or track those webinars and, and go back and see, um, you know, watch those recordings all from within your membership portal. Uh, and I think what what's really special or different about this one in particular is the groups. So they have these, they have this concept of different groups, different cohorts, and then those groups are actually private. So they would have like a group administrator, you could add different members to your group. And then you could have internal conversations, you know, write messages back and forth, post post on like the bulletins, uh, and then also bubble that up to the, the larger uh, organization as well. So wrapping that up, um, as we said, we're going to kind of cover some of the, the services we offer in addition to what we talked about, like custom website development and the membership portals. Um, one of the packages that one of the services that we find very uh, appealing, I think, for nonprofit organizations is what our different website maintenance and support services. So this is sort of positioned as website support services, but this really can be these can be put in place um, to support your organization across the digital ecosystem. So this can also be marketing. This can be design and the website design or creative design. It could even be branding. 
uh, just at different tiers. And we, we put these, we, we list these out there. We, we, we sell these through, um, through TechSoup. Because we we know the need for we know how you know there's a lot of turnover oftentimes in nonprofit organizations a lot of times nonprofits will use interns or part time staff to support the things that might be more tech more more digital more um, web focused uh, or the the people that are that are you know that we we talk to might not have that expertise themselves and that the, your time their time is best spent serving the community giving back you know making sure that you're running that organization whether you're the executive director or director of development. Uh, you know, director of marketing, you know, you just work in one of these different departments. Uh, you know, it's really not the best use of your time to learn how to, 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 to build a website or design website pages. You might not have all the expertise uh, to design like the right user experience, to optimize the conversions, to put these, these different platforms in place. But we do. Uh, and we offer those services um, on either a support basis and, so, and as well as on a, on a project basis at different levels. So what that looks like, uh, uh, if you I'll start kind of show where this li is listed on the the website um, on TechSoup's website, what that looks like is different tiers uh, as well as custom tiers. So our pricing starts at uh, four ninety nine. That's just like a very basic package where we have access to our team. We use a whole ticketing system. You can put these requests in. You can put through as many requests as you like. We just kind of bunch them down into the hours that we have available for that that month, and it moves up from there at different different levels. Um, one of those sizes, it's not one size fits all for sure. So one of, one of those sizes might not fit you. We also have custom custom um, packages that we are happy to customize for you and for your organization. Uh, in addition to that, we do have our growth driven uh, custom website development, which would be some of what we talked about today. So understand that we're going to to take that growth driven design, growth driven design, um, and drive and build that Launchpad website, for, to do the strategy, build that Launchpad website for you uh, and get you something that you can use and build on over time. Uh, those growth-driven sites typically start at around $15,000. These are really good for nonprofits that have already have a website, but you've kind of outgrown that current content management system. A lot of times we see people that are moving from like Drupal where they're not able to make an update to it or Joomla uh, or another outdated system that you, that your current web host doesn't support or your previous webmaster doesn't support. Uh, this is also a good good uh, solution for someone who's looking for things like member portals, e-commerce, donor management, in addition to just a brochure style website. Uh, as I touched on a little earlier, we also have a special for this webinar where we're, we're um, offering a custom, mem a custom member portal. Um, this is like our Nonprofit focused member portal where it's going to give you the, the a lot of the the I'll call it, I'll call it out of the box functionality would be expected in a membership portal. These aren't the full custom ones, um, like the one that we talked we touched on for like National Trafficking Sheltered Alliance um, was a much more custom portal and a lot more a lot more not features a lot of the same features but very very customized to their specific offering. This members th these membership portals we're putting out there allow you to um, you know drive membership charge for membership, control that converse, control that conversation, brand this uh, for your organization. Uh, it's going to give you the, the common features like a member directory, uh, events calendar, resource center, activity feeds. So a lot of a lot of what you would need to get a member portal, usually a new member portal launched. A lot of we do get um, people come to us that, that are trying to migrate from something else in the past. We're happy to talk to you about doing that, but a lot of times this isn't the best best solution for that because we want to, we don't we're not always matching you know feature to feature uh, and there is there are often some some hiccups or some speed bumps that we would, we would run into trying to migrate memberships and that that piece in and itself could be could be a little bit different than than this custom member portal um the intended audience for this is nonprofits who either want to launch membership portal or support community volunteers community groups or other membership functions as I said, or you know, kind of trying to dip your toe in, or you already have an existing membership base and you want a better way to manage them online. As I mentioned, so the website maintenance services that you'll see, um, this I think it says starting at seven ninety nine a month. Our prices have changed a little bit. We've lowered some prices and raised some prices, so this might be a little bit outdated. Um, but this is what I've started to cover, and I'll show you where you know where to find these on TechSoup site. Uh, so you can just quickly go there. Um, we do like to have a conversation with you before to make sure we fit the right the right package to you, that we're, we're guiding you down the right path, um, but you can actually just go right to the TechSoup site uh, and purchase these as well. 
Uh, these services, as I started to mention, these are great for kind of running the gamut of you know website development, but also also digital marketing can be included in here as well. You'll get a dedicated account manager. Um, you'll get availability from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we do all, also offer packages where we have um, more availability, but a lot of times you're not doing much on your website overnight. Um, so these are great packages just to keep your website running smoothly, make sure that you're, it's always performing well, making sure it's up to date, making sure you're, there's no broken links, making sure it's kind of staying on brand. Um, we also have additional packages like the we have an upgrade package and then a premium package that just offer additional services in, uh, on top of that the basic package. We are, are going to go through some of this, the for those services, the systems that we cover. So, you know, we're not, we do just full transparency. We don't, we won't work on any, just any website. Um, our preferred content management system would be WordPress. Um, we can support that. We can host that. We can also make a lot of updates and changes to that. And we also have a number of agency or enterprise licenses to offer um, plugins and plugin support on that system. Uh, some common plugins and co common tools that we do support are things like WooCommerce, Gravity Forms, uh, Elementor for the page builder, GiveWP for donations, uh, the events calendar, Buddy Boss, Buddy Press, uh, and then the integrations with systems like HubSpot um, or other third party systems. And then, sort of lastly, um, we offer a hosting and security that's specific for WordPress websites. Uh, this is to make sure that you have a managed application. Um, if anybody's been paying attention to the WordPress space, might have been affected by this. You saw where WordPress cut off WP Engine last week and people would, would have or could have lost access to their site because they were on a, on a separate platform managed by WP Engine um, that WordPress was like, hey, you're not following our standards. You're not, you're not um, licensing. You're, there's a licensing issue between your system and ours. And they were able to, they, they kind of cut those off. This, our service will, is would eliminate that type of feature because we it's fully managed by us. It also includes a lot of those, um, a number of different plugins that we are able to offer our clients. Uh, it includes a, an SSL, so a security certificate. So when you come to your website, you don't see that, that warning sign that says this website's not secure, especially important if you're storing customer data, transmitting customer data, taking um, payments. Um, we run back, we run backups, we keep onsite and offsite backups. We manage manage like the technical aspect of the site, so the PHP versions and things like that. We'll put a, a CDN in place, and we make sure it's secure. We monitor it for malware. Uh, we put a firewall in place, and we just keep the websites up to date. So, we, uh, where to go to ma to manage this? And and this this uh, whole presentation will be shared with you all over email after this call um, or after this this Zoom. Uh, but if you go to TechSoup's website, just pick the drop down that says services. Uh, the the website services option and the digital marketing services option are all of our are, are all our services. So uh, pick either one of those. It'll take you to a page to kind of describe some of these different services, um, and you you can reach out to us, schedule a time for a conversation. We're happy to have those those calls with you and kind of talk you through what the best solution, best next step would be. And with that, I will turn it over for questions. I did see a couple in the chat, but as Aretha mentioned earlier. Either, you can either add this to the webinar chat or you can add them to the, the Q&A. Um, I don't see any Q&A right now, so I'll just start there. Um, someone asked what services are included in marketing. Uh, so marketing is kind of fits in the same the same level as the website one. Um, we are we just we don't want to like discriminate between um, like if you take if you get our website package, we're not going to say, hey, we're not going to do the marketing stuff for you and vice versa. Uh, we do think those are very very complimentary or kind of one of the same um, different levels there too. So a kind of a basic package would just be a, a little bit less work per month um, and more kind of common marketing things. So making sure like your social media account is, you know, sort of scheduled out on time, um, helping you with things like email marketing on MailChimp or active campaign or constant contact make sure those things are formatted correctly. What's not included in the base package would be like any design or developments. We're not going to do a brand new package or, um, you know, logo design and like the, in our base packages, those would either be a custom project or they would be in one of the, the higher, the higher tiers. And those would either be like sort of like production design um, or, you know, content, copywriting, things like that would not be in that, that base package. But again, that's like, when I think about the basic one, those are really good fits for people that, 
you know, don't have a, a, a day in day out need for someone to be managing their marketing, but they also don't want to deal with the turnover of like an intern. Um, they want to know that their stuff is managed. They want to know that they've got the resource to go to, to, to get this stuff cleaned up and then understand that we can, we can probably get a little bit more done um, in less time than someone who doesn't have to do this every day, doesn't have a skill or background in that, that space. Um, so you, that somebody asked about an active campaign integration. Uh, we would have to see what, what that integration looks like. So they're all shapes and sizes, um, you know, depending on what fields and format and stuff like that you have and what, what it has to be integrated with. But we certainly do support a number of active campaign um, accounts as part of the different levels of packages. Any, anybody else, any more questions? Great. That was pretty easy. Um, we do have a couple of things. Uh, in addition to this, you'll see uh, we have we are offering a free ebook. Um, it's called Chat GPT for Nonprofits. We put it together. It's got um, 20 free prompts that will help your organization um, you, you know, use Chat GPT or Chat GPT or tools like Chat GPT, which are prompt driven. Um, we're offering that for free. If you take this survey, we are we ha are hosting a um, AI for nonprofit survey alongside in partnership with TechSoup to really understand to get a better understanding in 2024 going into 2025 what that space looks like. You know how nonprofits are using it, how it can be better used for nonprofits, and then we'll we'll be using that to um, to develop further education around this type of material. Uh, and then in addition in this, you'll have a link directly to us to book one of those consultations. So this will take you right to that page that I was talking about um, on TechSoup site. But if, if you don't want to navigate there yourself, this will be here and, and for your, your benefit uh, in the future. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, you'll have our contact information through this and you should get a, a follow-up email in the next 24 hours um, if you'd like to reach out. Awesome. Bye-bye, everybody.